All right, let's look at uh, forces of muscle contraction and what they're affected by. One is just the number of uh, muscle fibers stimulated. So this is showing it here, you know, we stimulate more muscle fibers, we're going to have a stronger contraction. And as you can see, it maxes out though, because you know, you can only lift so much. Next is the uh, size of the uh, fibers stimulated. Uh, if you have more myofibrils within that muscle fiber, you're gonna have a stronger contraction. Next is the frequency of stimulation. The more rapidly a muscle is stimulated, uh, the greater the force it exerts. Next is the degree of muscle stretch, and this is kind of like we got a Goldilocks zone here. Uh, if the muscle is overstretched, and that's what we see over here, all right, the actin and myosin hardly are overlapping, all right, and so that's going to lower the force of contraction. Uh, conversely, if that muscle fiber is overly compressed, then there's no further shortening, and so that's going to lower the force of contraction as well. And like I said, you know, we have this Goldilocks zone here where we have a lot of myosin overlapping with a lot of actin. We get a strong contraction. All right, let's look at the velocity and duration of contraction. Muscles are going to vary on how fast they can contract and for how long before they fatigue. And this is due to a few things. One is recruitment. So the more motor units that we have involved, uh, so that's essentially more motor fibers, uh, muscle fibers we have involved, the faster and more prolonged the contraction will be. Another is load, that's resistance to the muscle or weight or whatever you want to look at. So the greater the load, the slower the contraction and the shorter contraction. And that makes sense. Uh, if you're lifting something heavy, it takes you longer to lift it and you can only lift it for a shorter period of time than something that's lighter. Another thing that's gonna affect the velocity and duration of a contraction is a muscle fiber type. So uh, we have essentially three fiber types in us. We have slow oxidative fibers. So slow oxidative fibers have a slow speed of contraction. They do aerobic respiration. They have a high myoglobin content. So myoglobin is a protein that stores oxygen in our muscle cells. They have low glycogen stores. And they have low glycogen stores because uh, if we take glucose and we break it down completely into carbon dioxide and water, you know, we don't need large quantities of glucose around. It is slow to fatigue because it's not doing a lot of anaerobic respiration. It has many mitochondria and blood vessels to deliver oxygen to those cells. Uh, and these are known as endurance muscle fibers. Next are fast oxidative fibers. They have a fast speed of contraction. They are aerobic, do aerobic respiration again. They have high myoglobin content. They have an intermediate amount of glycogen. Uh, they have many mitochondria and blood vessels there. Uh, they can also do anaerobic respiration. And so they're moderately fatigue resistant. They can still reach fatigue because they can do anaerobic respiration. And these are, you know, like what we do with, um, uh, so uh, this is endurance here, right, uh, as well. Uh, things like walking. Next are fast glycolytic fibers. Uh, these have a fast contraction. They're anaerobic. They do anaerobic respiration. They have low myoglobin because myoglobin would store oxygen in those muscle cells. They have a high glycogen content because here, if you're doing anaerobic respiration, you have to burn through a lot of glucose molecules to get the same amount of energy that one glucose molecule would get through aerobic respiration. They have low mitochondria because that's where aerobic respiration occurs. All right, and they have low blood vessels going, low amounts of blood vessels going to them. Uh, we use these guys, these fast, like a, uh, flat, fast twitch ones, for short-term intense and powerful movements like sprinting, like lifting weights. But these muscles can fatigue quickly because of the lactic acid buildup that occurs. In them. So, I've got a question for you, right? So, uh, you know, if you go to uh, KFC, Lee's Chicken, what do you like? Do you like the dark meat or do you like the light meat? I don't know, I'm, I kinda like both. So, have you ever wondered why white meat is white and dark meat is dark? No? Well, wonder no more. Because I'm gonna tell you, right? It all has to do with the types of muscle fibers there are and also with the myoglobin content. Dark meat, if you think about what dark meat is, those are the legs and thighs, and chickens walk around a lot. So if you're walking around a lot, you don't want your muscles to fatigue that way. So these are slow twitch muscle fibers that they're using there. So slow twitch muscle fibers are doing aerobic respiration they have high myoglobin content, and that high myoglobin content is what makes the meat darker, okay? What's white meat on a chicken? That is the breasts and the wings. 
Chickens don't really fly a whole lot. They only fly to get away from a predator. So they'll do quick, powerful movements to get away from a predator. And you want to do quick, powerful movements in that. Okay? So you want to do anaerobic respiration there. So using your fast, like, uh, fast twitch muscles there. Okay? So those muscles, though, have a low myoglobin content because they're doing anaerobic respiration. They don't need a lot of myoglobin. And so that's why dark meat is dark and white meat is white. Dark meat is dark due to the high myoglobin content. Uh, white meat is white because of the low myoglobin content. If you ever had duck, they usually use the breast, that's dark meat. If you ever had alligator, it's white meat. Oh, also let you know, fish is meat, just no myoglobin in it. All right, let's look at uh, cardiac muscle. So this is showing slow oxidative, fast glycolytic. So looking at cardiac muscle, uh, our, cardiac, our heart is essentially separated into two units with the walls of the upper chambers known as the atria and the walls of the lower chambers which are known as the ventricles. Uh, contraction with skeletal muscles, uh, with cardiac muscles, similar to skeletal muscles, there is a difference though. If I stimulate one area of the atria, the entire atria are going to contract, okay? This is uh, very different from uh, skeletal muscle. If I want my entire biceps brachii to contract, I get to stimulate each individual cell. Here, with cardiac muscle, I just got to stimulate one little spot, the whole thing's gonna contract. That's really good because we want our heart to function as a pump. We want the atria to pump down blood into the ventricles. We want the ventricles to pump at the same time and pump blood up and out of the heart, either to the lungs or the body. Now, so here, the entire network responds in an all or none manner. All right, so they're all going to contract at the same time, or they're not. Uh, also, sustained and tympanic contractions do not occur. So we don't want our heart to stay contracted. So tetanus, maximum sustained contraction, we don't want that to occur because our heart will cease to function as a pump again. All right, let's take a look at uh, smooth muscle. So smooth muscle fibers, first of all. Uh, there are two types of smooth muscle fibers. One is called multi-unit smooth muscle. And these are muscle fibers that function as a separate unit. All right, so this is found in the iris of the eye, in our blood vessels, our rectopeli muscles, and pulmonary air passages. Okay, so here, you know, you go into a, uh, a bright room. If you remember, those internal set of muscles on the, our irises will contract. These guys are relaxed. You go into a darkened room, the outer set of muscles, the radial set, will contract. The circular set, the inner set, will relax. So they're not contracting at the same time, all right? So by the radial set contracting, pupils get open uh, larger. So each mute motor unit contracts independently of the other, all right? These guys will contract by hormones or nerve impulses. All right, next is uh, smooth, uh, visceral smooth muscle. And this is a sheet of spindle-shaped cells held in close contact by gap junctions. These guys function as a single unit. Uh, when a contraction occurs, one cell, um, uh, when a contraction occurs in one cell, it's going to move into the next cell. Now what we see here, and this is showing it from the small intestine, is we have two layers of muscle here. We have a longitudinal layer, which is the outer layer, and a circular layer uh, is the inner layer. When these guys contract, uh, they're going to shorten the, the, the length of the tube. When the inner set, the circular muscles contract, they're gonna make the diameter smaller. But these two sets of muscles are gonna to work together to uh, form a contraction. They don't work independently of each other. And the main kind of contraction they do is known as peristalsis. This is contraction in a wave-like pattern. And what it's gonna do is gonna move substances down a tube. All right, so if you swallow, your esophagus is always gonna squeeze right behind what it's trying to move down uh, that tube. Uh, an analogy of this is if you took some toothpaste tube and you're at the end of it and you would just squeeze it from the back to the front. You're always squeezing behind the toothpaste. That's essentially what we're doing in peristalsis. Why they say that it's a wave-like pattern, because if you watch the organ itself, you would see this wave of contraction from the top to the bottom. So just like this. Okay. If we look at smooth muscle contraction, once again, it's similar to skeletal muscle contraction. Uh, there are some differences here. All right, so, uh, yeah, so this is peristalsis here. Um, so, uh, a couple differences here. 
Uh, here, uh, calcium binds to a different protein called calmodulin and not troponin. Has the same effect, so. Uh, these guys don't have a Z-disc, so the contraction can really shorten the muscle. Uh, they are slower to contract and relax than skeletal muscle, but the contraction lasts longer. They also have what is known as a stretch relaxation response. Uh, so smooth muscle will contract when it's stretched, but will relax due to the resistance. And that's it of the semester.